Thanks everyone for joining the Cosmos SDK community call. So this is the first time we're doing it as a monthly call instead of a bi-weekly call. And I would say there's a, a fair amount of updates and a demo, uh, a fair amount of updates that we have for you guys and a demo at the end from Anmol from, start, uh, from Cosmology and he'll be demoing Starship um, and talking about it. Oh, automated message. Um, so from the team updates, I'm just going to go through them, uh, and then I'm going to then I'm going to dive into each section. So from the team updates, I want to dive into the storage working group and what we've been doing there, the runtime working group and the research we're doing there, and, and how we're collaborating with people, the accounts um, module that's uh, up and coming, auto CLI collections, and optimistic execution. For the Eden update, um, we're just going to release an updated timeline and give you guys an update on our testing. Um, and that will help influence integrators, and we're hoping to uh, help people with integrations just so they can get some early testing with it. And like I mentioned, then we'll have a demo of Starship. So starting from the top, um, we have storage. Um, just double checking. Bez, are you here? I am. You wanna you wanna give a quick update on storage? Yeah, so a uh, quick update. Um, we made, we've we been making really good progress. Uh, we have a kind of POC of the uh, state storage uh, interface uh, designed. We also have a ROX DB implementation implemented uh, as a backing store, and we're ha probably like halfway through a Pebble DB implementation with also plans for a SQLite um or a b-tree based implementation on the state commitment side we've been making really good progress on benchmarking mem ivl uh, along with a bunch of uh fixes and improvements over the past few days um uh thanks to uh yiming from say and huang and matt uh, the whole team so uh pieces are starting to finally come together over the next week or two, we're going to be kind of ideating and uh, designing the uh, the root multi store, for lack of a better term. We haven't really come up with a better one yet, um, but that kind of will be the the next big piece. Afterward, we will be pretty heavy into benchmarking and fine tuning all the parameters, uh, and then we'll have you know data to show probably for the next next uh, community call. Um, Let's see. Am I missing anything else, Marco? Is that um, a pretty good, good? Sounds good yeah. to me. I, I guess also just to like tease some numbers. Um, yeah, the yeah, I, yeah. IBL, or you want to tease some numbers? Um, I don't remember the exact. I think it was. Uh, if you have a better memory, then you probably should say. But um, it was from MIVL. I remember it being really pretty high. Um, on the yeah. order of processing fifty or sixty thousand leads a second. Yeah, so so compared to the current IVL that's in mainnet everywhere, um, comparative to the new IVL coming out in uh, 50, um, in the Eden release, there was a, so the benchmarking is was done in a way that like we have an external data set and then we're processing to reconstruct the tree. Um, and the external data set I believe was like around like 3 million um, leaves or a bit more. Um, and it was just how fast we can process per second. Um, on the current IVL, we had, I believe, around um, two to 3,000 leaves a second on IVL 1.0, which is coming with Eden. We had about um, 30 to 40 um, leaves, uh, 30, 30 to 40,000 leaves a second um, with a IVL, uh, with the current IVL repo, just with the hash map backend. It was around like, uh, I want to say, 60,000 leaves a second. And then MEM IVL, if I'm not mistaken, was around 100,000 leaves a second. Um, and so those are like rough numbers. Um, we'd have to double check, but definitely some major performance improvements coming down the road. Um, as just a quick question on this new quote unquote root multi store, is it still going to be coupled to the IVL? Uh, implementation or is there plans to oh. have distract away the underlying tree? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes, yeah, so that's a that's a good question. Um, no, there. So one of the kind of big design goals of this whole thing is to remove a lot of unnecessary abstraction 
and leaking of IVL uh, specifics into the store design. So the high level idea of how it'll all be wired together is, um, again, we have this root multi-store um, for lack of a better term, we'll probably come up with something different to not confuse people with the existing implementation. Um, what will happen is this thing will be defined by an interface um, and it'll accept, uh, the default implementation will accept uh, a state storage backend and a state commitment backend. Uh, I, I believe the consensus is we'll have one per tree, although you can choose to define it however you wish. So there will be no IVL um, APIs leaked into uh, this root multi-store uh, uh, interface or implementation. So, you know, if you want to replace it with something like SMT, uh, you're more than welcome to. Um, or anything else, but we will have a default implementation, which um, is looking like it'll be some variant of MemIVL. Now, how does that how does that affect things like IBC that rely on like getting like proofs and stuff from the CD? Like, will that break stuff, or how does mm -hmm. that? Work? Yes. No. Well, well, it'll still be ICS twenty three proofs. Yeah. For 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 IVL, it's going to be the same. IVL. But if you switch, then the idea is that either there's two options and the easier option is that the proof system the proof the generated proof matches the ics23 spec and this way it just works out of the box and you don't need other chains to update if you need other chains to update meaning there's something in ics23 that you can't there's something in your proof system that you can't make it generalized to ics23 then you, there would need to be a new ics23 release um and uh, and you would need to like probably get ahead of the curve and like do it like six months prior to your launch or your update where teams can uh, it can already propagate through the ecosystem that makes that makes a ton of sense is there like i know marco we had chatted about this in the past like is there ability to have different sort of like different kb stores or maybe multiple databases or something um having the ability to have multiple types of trees like for instance like in our case, right? Like there's a lot of logic in the SDK that really relies on the fact that like keys are iterable, for instance. Um, but like in our EVM, right? Like we don't leverage that property at all. So like, is yeah. that possible so, as well? Or? So, so the interesting thing here, um, Buzz, correct me if I'm wrong, is iteration and getting the gits from the um, storage are now gone to the raw, now go to the raw database instead of the tree. And so the tree is not required to have iteration on it directly is that correct those but yes you can use you can use different trees for different modules perfect um, awesome. actually one more one more yeah. quick thing not to bombard your beds um but the other use case that would be interesting as well would be um having the ability to have access to some sort of state that is persistent but not uh consensus enforced um, like for instance, we run like on our EVM, we run like an indexer um, in order to basically fulfill like the Ethereum JSON RPC spec. Um, and kind of what we're doing right now is we maintain like this off-chain database, and we've had some issues with like it leaking into consensus based on um, how the current like KB store setup is. Um, will there or is it possible to have some sort of you know very liberal access, general writable space that is not included in the app hash? Um, Think that would that would mean for us it would be really useful. It's awesome. Buzz might be wait, but um, the recordings uh, there's a recording, so I'll make sure to send him the excerpt. Um, Sounds good. What's needed. Awesome, awesome. So next on the list, we have the runtime. And so what the runtime or what we are calling runtime is basically a refactor of the core layer or rewrite of the core layer of the SDK. And the goal here is that we want to make the core layer more modular, meaning either swapping out different consensus, swapping out different storage, swapping out different servers and so on, a lot simpler, but also easier to maintain. And so, the, so there's a working group ongoing right now, and it's just started. Um, and we've been doing uh, did a presentation in the working group last week, and I'll be updating the presentation for next week. If you do want to join, then just give me a shout. 
um, either here or in Slack or on Telegram, Twitter, all of those work. Um, and both the storage and the runtime, we, we do have a, a lot of people involved already. So, and it's also just good to um, figure out more use cases. And so if you have a use case that you want at the core layer of the SDK, then it would be good to understand that. And when I say core, it's really when we focus in what is in base app and how the entire app is constructed. Um, not, not a crazy amount of updates there, um, but if you want to join, definitely let me know. Accounts module. So on the accounts module, uh, we've been working with a lot of the wallets um, in the Cosmos ecosystem and a few and very many of the uh, Cosmosm account abstraction teams have also joined the conversation. And the idea around accounts is, is uh, it's a generalized um, module that you can use to generate accounts, either multi-sig, on-chain multi-sig, vesting account abstraction, um, of Z fee grant and the, and the list really goes on. And so the module, is, we just had a demo of the API in our team call right before this. Um, and so the author there will be breaking the PR part into smaller PRs and be pushing it into the SDK. We do have a few open questions um, that we'll probably be asking the working group just to answer, but you, we should be expecting that module to land um, and release this month. Um, we're still talking if we should uh, prep it for pre-Eden or only use it for post-Eden. Um, and that's based on just the users that would want it. Um, if you have any questions, just, just shout at the top of your lungs and then we can then I can answer it. Um, auto CLI. So well, auto, auto CLI, we've been talking for a while. Um, we've completed the query, the migration of all SDK modules in the repo to uh, move away from manually written queries to, um, the, to using auto CLI. Um, right now, um, Julian, Atish, and others are working on getting queuing and transaction signing working with uh, auto CLI and Hubble. And then once that is completed, then they will migrate all the transaction CLI. So the, the goal is that we're able to complete it this month. Maybe it bleeds a bit into September. But the idea here is that module and app modules and app developers will no longer need to write or have their own client package and uh, reduce the amount of boilerplate needed to write modules. So less, less code writing for SDK modules, that's always exciting. Um, collections, uh, we're just, we're on the cusp. I think all the PRs are open for the full migration of the SDK to collections. This has actually helped reduce a lot of boilerplate code. So a lot of the iterators, key prefixes, all these things that you previously had to manually write. And while, do, while some people do enjoy boilerplate, we do want to reduce it because the majority of the population does not. And so here with collections, um, we're just about completing the migration of SDK and you should be able to use it in the next release freely and it will help reduce the amount of code you're writing within modules, therefore making it easier to maintain. We do, um, we are doing some, we are looking to find use cases for how to expose the schema. So when you are using collections, you do um, generate, you do use this um, schema.new method and that schema registers all the schemas that you're using inside your module to be potentially exposed to the external parties. And so a use case here is if you get the raw state out today, the raw state is encoded in protobuf. And to, to decode that protobuf, you basically need to have a switch statement over all the protobuf in the SDK in order to find how to decode it. And the schema basically says like, hey, here you go the raw data, here you go the schema on how to decode it. You don't need to do the large switch statement. And so we're thinking of exposing that over a gRPC and uh, state streaming as metadata for users to be able to decode data and not have to um, write a bunch of extra code. Um, so the other thing, um, Facu, Facundo, do you wanna do the update on optimistic execution? Sure. So uh, regarding optimistic execution, um, I don't know if we already talked about this, but it's basically using uh, one of the new uh, features of Comet BFT. So it's basically um, 
we instead of waiting and doing the block processing like late in the um, ABCI flow, we do it as soon as possible. Um, so, and uh, we have a, an RFC already merged if you want to go and take a look. And we are finishing the implementation. We are doing some testing uh, and adapting some other parts of the SDK to uh, be able to um, work with this new um, um, because we we have to, to we we are doing some uh, parallel uh, access to some data, so we have to adapt these these parts of the SDK. Um, so yeah, and it's going great, I think. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Any questions on that? None. Awesome. Yeah. So definitely now execution of the block will be a lot faster. Hopefully block times, um, well, it's a double-edged sword because it's it's nice to have fast block times, but if the blocks are empty, then it's uh, not needed. Um, hopefully we fix uh, some of the issues around empty block, empty block creation in the SDK with uh, upcoming epochs. Awesome. Um, so those are team updates. Now on to the Eden update. So the release timeline. So early on, we were talking like mid-July. Um, and we were uh, we wanted to do a uh, coordinated release with all the products, so that means IPC and Cosmosm, um, and uh, Jacob and the Notional team did a did an amazing job updating the IPC Go repo, Cosmosm, uh, the Confio team, Alex also updated uh, Cosmosm, Wasmd, um, and so right now the IPC team tagged an alpha release. Um, we're about to tag an RC on the. SDK and we are going through test nets right now, and um, but the reason why we slowed it down was um, because we wanted to do a coordinated release and IBC wanted to um, get in a feature um, a channel upgradability that would really help the entire ecosystem, and so uh, we decided to slow down the release process, release timeline in order to. Um, Get this feature in just because it's been such a requested feature to get things like um, the fee, um, the fee payer system um, for relayers in to all channels, um, but also just having channel upgradability is quite a useful feature. Um, so we're aiming, uh, we're gonna, we're aiming for there's one PR that's open on the SDK, and then after that PR we will cut the RC, um, and we will uh, continue with the testnet. And then after that, the goal is around September 1st to have the releases. If you want to integrate um, Eden um, prior to that, we can give you uh, the branches or the tags that you would need to integrate. And we can also assist with any questions and just as an early integrator um, so that we can get the feedback um, on if anything is missing, um, like uh, dev form, Bear Chain is also uh, integrating 50, and he's bringing feedback on um, things on some added features um, that to get in before this release to enable them to launch sooner. Any questions on Eden? Awesome, awesome. Sweet, uh, and more. Um, I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, do you want to take it away with the demo of Starship? Sure, yeah, I can do it. I'll quickly share my screen. Okay. I hope you guys can see this. Yes. So uh, just to quick, uh, give everybody a quick introduction. Starship uh, aims to be a unified developer environment of sorts. So I come from the Web2 world where it's very common to have a dev, uh, dev environment, dev staging prod. And uh, staging is treated more like what testnets look like and prod, prod is mainnet. But uh, the dev environments uh, is what seem to be missing. So if we used to go from like local or to directly to um, you know, test, test nets. Which testnets to me uh, should be treated more as more as production. So hence Starship exists. So the whole idea of Starship is like from a simple config file, if we can make the um, infrastructure uh, setup cost uh, min minimize that and make it reproducible and like be able to run um, internal devnets of sorts in in uh, locally on the on the CI or on the um, 
or on uh, like a large Kubernetes cluster. And so what it looks like, uh, it, what it ends up looking like is you with a simple config file, you can specify what chains you want to spin up, uh, what layers you want, uh, if you want to spin up Explorer, chain registry, all those kind of things. And what we do is basically spin all these things as um, fancy Docker containers using Kubernetes for orchestration and spin it up uh, in a multi-node uh, fashion. So the key, like the main thing that we wanted to figure out was um, uh, be able to spin up one or any number of validators should be simple. So that is, uh, you can spin up like any number of validator nodes. You can spin up any number of relayers down the line, not right now. And it's, uh, we have uh, support for all types of relayers. There are different types of relayers and different types of chains. But uh, this is a expansive sort of configuration where you can do chain upgrade uh, testing of sorts so where we prepare the validators properly and stuff. So basically anything that happens in the cosmos, we want to be able to create it in a mini cosmos of sorts inside a Kubernetes cluster, and basically everything. Um, so yeah, we're trying to do that. And uh, in um, so purpose of this, I'll try to, limit to a demo of sorts and i'll quickly just show you what it looks like so um okay so we have a config file here starship where i'll spin up two chains one is osmosis chain gaia chain both with 10 validator nodes uh re some relayer between them explorer and the chain registry and what it looks like so we just uh to make it sure we have some helm commands um in place and i'm connected to a kubernetes cluster that is running somewhere and uh, it's quite low on resources as well, not that much. It's, it has eight VMs behind it, but we can run it anywhere, basically. And so K9S is what I use for um, visualization, and all these nodes are now starting to spin up. Uh, so yeah, we can see that we use faucets uh, and trade registries and other stuff to be able to spin all these validators and everything up. And it takes around two minutes of sorts. So by the time this spins up, I can you know, make but I can also show you what it looks like after it. So the idea is once you have the test environments of sorts, uh, then you can also write test cases against the system and have like end-to-end -end testing um, there. So, and the test, since the infrastructure is spin up uh, as a black box, then you don't need to worry about what type of language that you're writing test cases in. So the test cases are black box tests that can be written in any language of sorts. So we have a um, like governance proposal, pool uh, creation test for Os OsmoJS. So this is all against Osmosis um, that we are already running in OsmoJS and Telescope. Uh, but now we have also tried to integrate with the Cosmos SDK where we were able to spin up some uh, number of nodes for the SIM app demo app and be able to write test cases against it. So currently the test case is very simple. It's just the first test case of... Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's it. It's fine. So yeah, by the time this spins up, um, it takes some... Sure. Uh, sorry, the demo It's always the case with the with the live demos. Which is it showing? Is it showing the terminals? Uh, it's still showing the browser. I guess I missed, uh, yeah, I missed this. So uh, what the config files end up looking like is, um, so this is just a config file. And in the, in the background, we're using Helm and um, uh, Kubernetes, basically, that's it. And so we uh, have simple command of make install, and it spins everything up. And you can see most of the nodes are up. Uh, but there's a sequence in which we start this up. Uh, so that the Hermes relayer is able to create channels and all those kind of things. Uh, you can see logs of them. You can SSH into that and uh, have access to it. Um, and yeah, and so that's about it. So I'll show you what it looks like from, uh, or somebody who's just trying to tinker. So I think this is something that we want to be used for like uh, all three. So smart contracts, um, front end, as well as chain testing sorts at whatever level or how much ever people want to use it. So we spin up an uh, ping pub explorer that is that just knows about this ecosystem or mini cosmos that we've created. So 
uh, it'll know about osmosis chain and the Gaia chain that is spun up. Uh, currently, they're empty, but you can initialize them as a part of your test setup of source, and that's what we end up doing. And you can see that there are a bunch of validators. You can query the query transactions and basically get a feel of what uh, the main net looks like, right? And we also spin up a chain registry of sorts. So this is this is important for write, writing test cases because yeah, you need a single point of uh, this chain registry became the single point of entry into this ecosystem. So that in this mini cosmos, so that now if uh, if you want to talk to any of the chains or any of the things, you can be via this chain registry. We follow the chain registry schema, but it's again only for this mini cosmos. So it just has the two chains and all this kind of thing. And the ma main thing is the IBC channels and stuff. So when we create a Hermes reader, we create the uh, IC, uh, ICS 20 channels, uh, but then you can also create more channels and as part of your test setup. And we scrape it uh, as part of the chain registry microservice that we have running. And so you can get information about what uh, you know, write test cases that are more dynamic of sorts, so that you don't need hard code everything, right? You can just fetch the information, and the test case will do. And so, yeah, that's about Starship. That uh, currently we support a bunch of things. I can share the links to the docs, and we are running this in the CI as well. So, what what when we run it in the CI, we just reduce the number of resources. Uh, for the nodes, and we are able to. Uh, you can specify how many CPU and how many memory you want to give to each of those pods, and these are you running like standard Kubernetes pods and stateful sets and the same things. But yeah, that's about it. If you have questions, or I would like to know like what kind of problems and what kind of features people would want uh, for this, and yeah, we're trying to. Uh, the main feature I think that was most requested was uh, to be able to get a fork of. You know the main net and run it on a multi-node setup of sorts. So that's the main priority for a like, couple of weeks, uh, which is hard. But yeah, so we'll have that as well. Oh, any questions? Oh. Yeah, we're we're also gonna uh, unmo made a PR into the SDK that added it. And um, and so we'll be using it within the Cosmos SDK for uh, longer lived end to end tests, but also upgrades and so on. Um, so yeah, definitely excited for it. Thank you. How how easy will it be to uh, extend it to include things like uh, an Oracle network? That's yeah. That is something that I want to do next. I don't have. Uh, it should. It is very simple. So, uh, so everything is built as part of like um, uh, very composable part. So we just need a component that is able to spin up oracles. So I don't have any use case or any problem statement around it. But yeah, if you do, let me know, and we can integrate it quite easily. If we can spin it up as a Docker container, we can integrate. Okay. Thank you. Uh, also, Polymer team has done a lot of work on this, where they have used uh, this uh, using it for their ETH system and Cosmos stuff, and they integrated. That they're helping this with a lot of more integrations of like just go earlier. They added support for that, and we are trying to expand to multi ecosystem. So, uh, testing it last with local branch work perfectly. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, local locally it runs okay ish. It is meant for like large Kubernetes clusters. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out how we can make the local system better, and maybe we can use something else. So the whole idea is like the config file should be there, and nodes should be running, and things should be working for people. Uh, where and how it is running, uh, developers don't care about and shouldn't care about. So we are trying to figure out if we can do some more stuff around local, uh, making the local development experience better. Thanks. Does anyone else have any questions? Awesome. That also wraps up the community call that we had for this week. Um, now I'd like to open the floor to any questions that any anyone might have or any PRs or issues that people would like us to look at. Um, this is the time. Otherwise, we can end a bit earlier. Awesome. Let's end a bit earlier. Let's give some time to everyone. 
for the people in oh Facundo. Oh sorry. <laughs> Wrong button. <laughs> um, awesome. Let's give everyone 30 minutes back. Enjoy uh, the rest of your day, evening, or morning, and see you in a month. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.